you know, in that pivotal point in life when you're trying to figure out who you are and what's important and you're going through school, you start to ask questions, right? Like, why am I not learning about these things that my community is telling me about? Why is it shameful to ask questions? Why isn't there more information around? these atrocities that happened um, in an educational system that is taxed with teaching you these things. Um, why is so much of, around that history as well romanticized? And so it really started pulling up these questions in me and it made me very angry. And so initially, a lot of my advocacy was based in anger. It was a super challenging time for me to try to grapple with identity. And so that really started my journey in uh, reclamation. Halito, Saho Chifoet, Sarah Adams Cornell, Choctaw Hoyosia, So Ishki at Timmy Adams, Pogni at Dorothy Jefferson, Oklahoma City Atali. Uh, my name is Sarah. I am a proud Choctaw woman and I'm the daughter of Tammy Adams and the granddaughter of Dorothy Jefferson live here in Oklahoma City, and uh, I do uh, advocacy work around indigenous uh, rights and education. I was raised non-traditionally, so I didn't have a lot of cultural knowledge in my upbringing, but there was some. Um, and that is because my maternal grandparents were in boarding school. And so if you know anything about Indian boarding schools, uh, they really had nothing to do or very little to do with education, much more to do with assimilation. They were assimilation factories. So there were some that were run by churches and others that were run by the government. And so there were different experiences within each different school. The one that my grandparents went to was very focused on education, um, but it was also um, definitely took away our cultural ways. Kids were not able to, um, they cut their hair immediately. And in our culture, that only happens, uh, or for some people in some tribes, that only happens when there's a death. And so for some of those children that went to boarding schools and they had their hair cut, they immediately thought, who died? You know, who, who in my family has, has passed? My grandfather was five when he went to boarding school and he only spoke Choctaw, but you were punished for speaking your language. So if you can imagine being a five-year-old child with no um, ability to communicate in an institution um, that uh, is not about fostering your growth, it's about making you white. Um, so that's kind of how a lot of our cultural ways were taken from us through these boarding schools and being an indigenous person in the 80s and 90s going through public school in Oklahoma was challenging um, and for a lot of reasons that I couldn't explain. I didn't have the vocabulary around what I was experiencing and so it was difficult for me to say I'm experiencing racism. You know I'm experiencing um, the the after effects of this uh, settler mentality that has been romanticized and that is a travesty that we we that we were not given the words to be able to um, communicate what was happening to us um, and i think that is a very common thread for a lot of uh, students of color um, that they aren't given that language that vocabulary i knew about my identity I didn't have a lot of background knowledge on it, but um, when I was in probably high school, early college, I definitely felt like there was something missing. Like there was just, there was a piece that just was not, that I needed that wasn't there. And so that really started my journey in uh, reclamation of my culture, of our language, of our ways, um, and uh, really, pushed me into activism at the same time because, you know, in that pivotal point in life when you're trying to figure out who you are and what's important and you're going through school, you start to ask questions, right? Like, why am I not learning about these things that um, my community is telling me about? Why am I not learning? Uh, why is it shameful to um, ask questions? Um, why is it why isn't there more information around surrounding like these atrocities that happened um, in an educational system that is taxed with 
teaching you these things. Um, why is so much of why that uh, around that history as well romanticized? Um, and so it really started pulling up these questions in me and it made me very angry. And so initially it was, uh, a lot of my advocacy was based in anger. It was a super challenging time for me to try to grapple with identity and, and um, uh, you know, all of the pieces that work in this, that, it, with, that work within the structure of racism that, that perpetuate this, right? So, um, for example, I was making, I was made the token a lot, right? I think most students of color can relate that at some point, if your class covers a certain to to topic, you become the expert and sometimes you become um, the target, you know, inevitably. Um, depending on what you're talking about. And so when we would come to Oklahoma history, I remember in high school, they made me, uh, there's, there's a, there was this, uh, around the land run, there was this um, ceremony that happened between uh, Mr. Oklahoma and Miss Indian Territory. And this was like a symbolic gesture and they were married in this symbolic ceremony that was supposed to show that the joining of Oklahoma and Indian territory. So white people and indigenous people in this like marriage um, that was totally based on violence, of course, which is ironic. But uh, so they reenacted that in my high school and I was Miss Indian territory. And I remember I didn't have regalia at the time, so my mom made me this tea dress, but she made it in black. And I remember being like, what? Why am I wearing black? She was like, uh, this was a travesty, you know? This is not a celebration. This is a mourning, you know, and you're gonna go in black. And I remember being like, okay, you know, but I still fell into that, um, yeah, I'll be Miss Indian Territory. Um, there was no represent accurate representation for indigenous people. So like when you saw a space for yourself, it was like, oh, even if it's negative, you know? And so undoing that within my life now of going, oh God, you know, like why, why didn't I know better? But I was a kid, you know, and it wasn't my responsibility to be responsible for my for the education and the material that was presented to me that that's due to our state and our educators and even the textbooks that we buy um, you know as a elementary school student I was participating in land run and reenactments um, most kids in Oklahoma were doing the same thing in about third or fourth grade in elementary school fast forward 25 years and my children are participating in land run reenactments as well and so um, I think when I became a mother as well, it really made me re-examine and think more critically about why are we still doing this? Why is this a thing? Why was it ever a thing? Our state and our country had um, a, a Holocaust that happened here that we don't talk about, but we like to romanticize it by talking about how nobody was here that it was vast open prairie with nothing and no one and people pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. And so there's this very romanticized view about how the state came to be. And we teach that to our children and we indoctrinate them at a very young age so that they relate. I don't know about you all, but when we did land run reenactments, there was, you were out of school, you were having a picnic on the playground you were playing games. So we built it around celebration. So we built this idea of theft, of uh, murder, about homelessness, about annihilation of a people around a celebration so that when people grow up, they still think of that and they want that for their children because they had such a good time. And we don't stop and think about what that really means. So 20 years later and we're still celebrating land run through reenactments that perpetuate that racism from generation to generation in Oklahoma. Uh, so that's why it's so hard for us to create change is because of that nostalgia, because of that, those good feelings that we had when we were learning about it is just then encased into 
um, Oklahoma history and it now becomes like fact, right? Without any of the supportive information about what happened to the original people of this land. And so to me, that is, those are part of the roots of my education growing up and sadly, the, the education of my children. And I would say that um, while it has improved some, we have so far to go. Um, but that was a part of my early education, which definitely shaped my activism. It absolutely had a piece in me going, okay, well, what, has, what are we doing now? Like, are we still doing these things? Are we still teaching the same material? And in uh, many cases, the answer is yes. When we're talking about education and in my upbringing and how that impacted me versus what we see now, it is still very similar. And in any industry that you would look at, things can change within three to six months. But when you look at our education system, 25 years passes and not a lot changes, there's something wrong with that.